Hello, this is Paul here, and I'm working with Blender 2.78. And current build, uh, if you look at the top of the screen, is 2.78.4. And yeah, I'm just using the Linux Mint with the what do you call it? The PPA, the package manager. So it's updated to the current one. <laughs> anyhow. Enough of that. I'm going to try to make a minigun. I saw some other guy do it and I was like, I can do this faster, so. And I have a different modeling workflow, so let's get rid of the default cube. I managed to find screencast keys. It doesn't come with this current build, but like an older version, like 2.74 or 5 or so. Maybe 6, I think. But anyhow, I had to go back a couple of versions to get the screencast keys, but I managed to find it, so. You see my little icon there, that's what that is. Okay, anyhow, first what I'm going to do is work on the barrel for the minigun, because that's usually what they do. So I'm going to add a mesh, and I'm going to do a cylinder, and I'm going to set my vertex count for cylinder face to 18, because I want to have three, well, we'll just see, we'll just get in edit mode. <laughs> This will be fast. Anyhow, it's a multiple of six, and that's why I'm doing it that way, because I'm going to have six barrels to this mini gun. So, GZ. Move that down. And when I do the moves, I can constrain it to the axis. So well, just watch my mouse hotkey thing indicator. My screen cast keys. There you go. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to go. I'm going to insert that. Like. So, I'll probably insert again just because. And I'm probably gonna do it like this. There, too. Yeah. So that way I have an edge loop containing my stuff on the outside, another edge loop on the inside. And now I'm going to do my barrels. Like so. One, two, three, and. I'm gonna turn off my control handles because I don't really use them. You can use them if you want, but I don't. They get in the way of what I'm doing. And I click there, and I got those three faces merged, so I'm going to hold shift, select a face, hold down control, and click face, and it'll get all the faces in between. I'll hit F to make face. It goes fast like this. So now I see you have the different faces just like that. Nothing too hard, right? And now I'm going to do these edges. Like that. W. W is a command I use a lot because that's like special commands in Blender. And before I go on, I'll notify you that I am using loop tools add-on and F2 add-on. There might be a few others, but those are the two I use because they're very handy in modeling. So keep that in mind too, that if you don't see loop tools or if you don't build faces as fast as I'm doing, it's because I have those two add-ons installed. All right, so let's get back on track. I'm going to go to their subdivide and I'm going to do that and so now this adds extra splits to these edges like so but I'm not going to need all of it so what I'm going to do is go into face mode get rid of all of this and I don't really need those because I can just work on this one at a time and I'm going to turn this into contiguous face, I believe. Yeah. That'll work. And what I'm going to do here is inset. And then go to loop tools. And circle. That makes a circle, but it's not exactly ideally placed or sized. So this will determine the size of each barrel in this. So, And I can move it probably like... Uh, Anyhow, <laughs> well, I probably won't be too super precise with this. It doesn't have to be because it's just. When you can, I could rotate it and get a line perfect, but I'm not going to worry about it because the way I'm doing it here is actually pretty quick and consistent. So let's scale that up a little bit more, get that big, and I'm going to inset so I have a control loop around it like that. 
Alright, so now I have that there. And I'm going to make sure my cursor is in the middle by snapping it. <laughs> so now it is like this, right? Alright. Are you following along? I hope you are. You're watching this video, right? So, yeah, and that, have all that selected. And my cursor is in the middle or the center point. I didn't move the whole object, so this should be at the center point too. If not, you could probably snap the cursor to this face here. That would be determined a good center too. And I'm going to switch my pivot center to the 3D cursor. So it's now when I pivot anything, it'll go around the 3D cursor. So like so. And what I'm going to do is duplicate but I'm going to hit R to rotate so it duplicates around a rotation and then I'm going to hit Z to make sure it snaps to the rotation on the Z axis which is still the same one I'm viewing in this case otherwise it just rotates around your view and then I am going to put in 60 because I know this is a six fold geometry so rotating 60 degrees and it goes where I want it like so so now I go BAM and it's done. And since I did all that as part of a duplication operation, now all I have to do is hit Shift R and it repeats that last operation. So, like that. It's fast. And then I can go here. I don't know the hotkey off command for remove doubles. It doesn't show it on the tooltip, but I know there is one somewhere. So I just I just highlight it or yeah, and go there. Actually I think it's part of my specials, is it? Specials, yeah, it is. And then you see the R is underscored, so any key with an underscore, so I could do specials in R. And that just does it. And you see it moves. All right. So when you see a list of things with that in command, you look for the letter with the underscore. That's your next hotkey. Or in the case if you don't see it, and there's a list. You usually use numbers. So that's another thing you can work a lot faster. Most hotkeys are indicated or underlined, or if it's in a series, like with one command, you just like you look for an underlined letter. Eventually, you get to memorize them. So that's a little tip for me right there. So now we have this set up here, and this will be the start of our barrels. So now all I got to do is select all this, this top side, and I grow this selection past, and then I shrink it back down so I get all those edges. In this case, it works just fine. So I have all this selected. What I'm going to do is duplicate that on the z-axis, and I'm going to move it up there, and duplicate on the z again, like so. And that's going to be a spacer, and these things in the middle line the barrels. So duplicate it again, like so duplicate again, like so. So now I have all these pieces, which is pretty simple, right? And it's just a matter of doing some bridging of edge loops now. So I'm going to move to this selection to view it. As you can see with my uh, screencast keys here. Alright, easy peasy. I'm going to select these loops and bridge them. So. Sometimes I just do it for my menus too, because I used to do it that way. <laughs> Not hot keys, man, just whichever way works. It's fine. So, now you can see I have these two things here and up here, and that one down there. This one I'm going to treat as the back of it, that's why I didn't do both sides, and these are going to be the spacers. This middle one will make a little narrower, but uh, I'll do it this way. Yeah, X-ray view, I select through everything I view too, so. Like so. Now that one's narrower. Be too narrower. <laughs> oh, I want it from the media. You know, stuff scales or does something odd, just look where your center is. Okay. Do and maybe I'll make this one a little thicker. 
So I'm just making this up as I go along. It's not any specific model or anything. I mean, you could do a specific thing, but I'm not doing it here. And what I'm going to do now is bridge. So it's like that. It's like that. And bridge edge loops like so. And this time, I believe I can just do the repeat command. No, nope, it's not going to work. Okay, I was wrong. It'd be convenient if that worked, but no. Da 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 da. Where? What was the uh, bridge edge loops? That was L. So now I can go with that, that, and in this case it's E. See, sometimes they change the menus. I use the specials menus. It does this pretty much the same thing. So I can do, do it that way. It's less hotkeys involved because <laughs> the other one is Control E and this one is just W E. All right, but that's a workflow consideration. It's just something to keep in mind. Some ways of doing the same thing are ever so slightly faster or easier. And if you can pick up on that, that's the way to do it. All right, even though the result is the same, right? Da -da 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 -da. Of course, this is real time. I'm not speeding it up. Of course, I could speed this up. Like so. so now we got our barrels established here like that. So easy, right? You know, they're the same diameter, so they're pretty straight. And now I will do it like this. I'll have a little bit sticking out like that. And. I will inset these for the inside diameter and I'll put x ray view like so and steer these inwards somewhere like that. And I'm just going to delete those faces because they're inside the barrel. You will never see them. In most cases, you're not taking this thing apart, or at least I'm not modeling this thing to come apart. It's just there for show, right? <laughs> Alright. Now we do like this. And select the boundary loops and I'm going to bevel them. So yeah. And I'm also gonna do this. Boundary loop scan, and what I'm going to do is shift E and increase up to one. So it might be neat to subdivide this if you want it looking clean. And actually, I'm going to do that here too. Holding down all with the shift and clicking on it, selects the edge ring or edge loop or however you say that. <laughs> well, actually it's in the face mode so it's selecting face. It's not edge rings. Anyhow, select them like that. It's fast, easy, quick, and set. And that gives me some control loops and make sure they stay pinned. I'm going to hit edge real option. I don't know if I need to do that. Do that anyways. And shift E and oh, I didn't mean to do that. So control C. Undo the steps, so back again. <laughs> e, boundary loops. Then uh shift E. Set the crease there. Those are just control loops and because I know how they respond, I set them hard and that will limit the stretching zone to inside there. Do the sub dive. Subdivision. Alright, so it's like that. I'm going to do that for the solar. I did not mean to do that. Like so. So now I got those. I'm going to inset them the same way and. Ba 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 ba. I will also uh, select the boundaries and set those to hard creases. So. And then I am going to 
First, I'll move the cursor here. Cursor to select it, and I'll hit X and faces. I'll go into object mode. While I'm in object mode, I will make the shading smooth for the whole object. And I'm going to set the origin to where I just dropped that 3D cursor. That's why I moved it there. So now this thing will slap onto whatever box. I don't know if I'll do the rest, but that's barrel. And if you hit and you subdivide this the way I did it, see how all the control edges are. It will look nice, smooth. And now you can build the rest of your Gatling gun thingy however you want. But this gets the main barrel piece done and has a line and fast in. It's not that hard. Alright. Rest is up to you. There you go.